It is Premiership semi-final time and I, for one, am very excited. The first game of the weekend is Friday night, Saints at home against Saracens. And in this, this video, I'll tell you why I think Saints are now strong favourites. Hello amateurs, welcome back to the channel. I'm going to be with you here with you throughout the end of this season and beyond. So hit subscribe down below to make sure you don't miss out on any future episodes. Now, earlier in the week, I had Saints as favourites, narrow favourites, uh, but now selection has been revealed. I think they are even more likely to progress and we'll get on to the reasons why later in the video. But my previous reasons, what I thought uh, earlier in the week is that Saints have just been more consistent this season, top of the table, deservedly, and their performance levels have generally been very high. Uh, they haven't really dropped off too much. And you compare that to Saracens, who've had some huge highs, but they've had some really poor lows as well. So you just expect Saints to be more likely to get a performance out on Friday night. Also, I think Saints are more well-rounded. They've got top performers all throughout the team, um, whereas I think Saracens may be just lacking a little bit of depth in some areas. They've Again, they've been inconsistent in terms of performance. Saints with home advantage, I think will be massive. Friday night lights it is a big thing. And um, yeah, I can just see Franklin's Gardens absolutely rocking on Friday evening. And I just think that Saints is experience of that Leinster semi-final where they didn't perform I think that will hold them in really good stead for this I think this will help them and although Saris have got this huge experience throughout a, a large number of their team of all these impressive knockout games I just think that that one game will really help Saints and might prove to be the difference now then let's look at this selection uh here it is and I just think this is huge for Northampton. They have been mucking around in recent weeks, missing a few people. They've swapped people in and out. Um, a bit of rotation, we could say. But I think what we've got now is very close to their perfect 15. And a few people I'm going to pick out, people that have come back into this side. So Tom Pearson, back in at open side. And it says a huge amount that they put him in to start ahead of Sam Graham, who's been playing really well, hugely aggressive carrying from Graham and club captain Lewis Ludlam, who are both on the bench. I just think it's a massive statement of intent. His carrying, his all-round game, I think is so important for Saints and added to Laws and Augustus in that back row. Again, perfect balance in the centres. And I think this one's possibly even more important. Uh, and the biggest reason why I think Saints are going to do well uh, on Friday night, and that is Berger Odendal back in the side, fit and available, the big South African. And there's lots of reasons why this is important. One, Fraser Dingwall likes to carry the ball to the line, and doing that, it's so much more effective if you've got a real heavy carrying threat around you. Odendal is that, and it just means that Dingwall's great ability to take the ball right to the line and then pass accurately away will be even more uh, effective. What it also means is that you get Tommy Freeman back onto the wing where he's most effective. He will then be able to roam. He'll be able to find and pick his spots and do all the things he does so well. He's been a very good centre, but I think Saints look so much more balanced when he's on the wing and able to do his thing. And this uh, adaptability allows Saints to go for a 6-2 split on the bench. Now, this is a, a risk for sure. We've seen it backfire for a couple of teams recently. Quinns uh, comes to top of mind. Will it backfire for Saints on Friday night or will they need that power, that extra weight coming off the bench in the forwards to take on Saracens? Okay, that's Saints. Uh, let's look at the Saracens team now. And the first thing I'm going to pick out is the props. Uh, Mako and... Riccioni, I think, are probably, probably their strongest scrummaging props. However, Mako got absolutely destroyed last time out against Sale. And I think if Northampton are really going to take this game away from them, then they need to try and really go after their scrum. I don't think the Northampton scrum is known as being that disruptive. They've been pretty solid, but not disruptive. So with their light pairing of second rows, will Davison, will Waller be able to go after these two props? 
if they can, if they can get a nudge in the scrum, then I think that would be a huge and really take away from Saracens. Also in the front row, there's the interesting subplot of Jamie George against Curtis Langdon. Jamie George, the incumbent and widely experienced England hooker captain against Langdon, who has been had an amazing season and is being really talked up about going on the summer tour. Will Langdon want to put down a marker here against England's captain? He doesn't seem like the type of person who needs too much extra motivation, but maybe that's it for, it for him here. In the back row, and Saracens have picked Billy Vonopola. He has been on the bench for weeks after weeks, and I just wonder what the reasoning is. Has he just got back to some kind of fitness? I know he's a big voice around the camp. Has he shown this week that leadership that he brings and they think that will be vital? Because frankly, his performances on the pitch haven't been up to it. Like he's come off the bench, hasn't really changed the game all that much. Uh, and it's not like Tom Willis has set the world alight, but I just wonder if it's more a psychological thing of picking Billy. And this could be his last game in England uh, for Saracens. And I just, I'd love to see him go out with a bang. I'd love to see him go out with a big performance. He's been one of my favourite players that England has possibly ever had at his peak. He was absolutely elite and I'd love to see a bit more of that from Billy. But here's the thing, I reckon Saints are going to target him. You know, they know that Saracens tick when Billy's going forward. So expect some huge collisions early doors with people really going after Billy Vonopola. In the back three, Alex Good is out injured, which ends an incredible streak of 47 consecutive starts in knockout games and finals for Saracens since 2010. That is absolutely wild. Uh, sad for him that he won't be a part of this. And I think it's sad for Saracens as well, because I look at that back three and they've, they've got great attacking ability, but I don't think they're the best defenders. Saints like to move the ball wide. They like to get the ball into those channels. And I think that could be their best route to success in this game. If they can get it out there, if they can challenge these players one-on-one, -on -one, then I think Saints might get a lot of joy uh, out wide. And that's where I think they'll really stand the best chance of winning this game. Now then, I said Saints are big favourites. This is a semi-final. Obviously, it's going to be tight uh, up to a point. But I think, I think they're actually going to uh, end up being fairly comfortable winners. Somewhere around the 55 minute 60 mark, I think they'll get a score that will take this game away for Saracens. And sadly, I see the Saracens dynasty, which has been amazing and I've been a huge fan of, going out with a whimper towards the end of this game. I think Franklin's Gardens will be rocking, Saints will be marching home, and sadly, Saracens will be out. But anyway, that's all I think. That's where I think this game will be won and lost. But what do you think? Anything uh, you know? I've missed? Any key players that you think will be a key role that I haven't mentioned? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll join you there for a friendly conversation. Um, and give the video a thumbs up while you're down there if you don't mind. Helps other people find it and you can subscribe there. Nope, there. <laughs> you can watch that one next. And do not forget to get out and play.